Hey friends, welcome to another episode of ZBrush on the iPad. So in this episode, I had a, I had a user uh, reach out through the comments asking me, you know, how do you make these keys that subtract um, or cut apart a model in preparation for print, okay? So I'll show you what one of those keys looks like now. There it is. Grab this tool and reposition it. So that's the cutter part of the key. There's, uh, you know, the positive pieces as well. We're seeing one here. So, you know, how do you make that? In the previous video, I showed how to import the key in, slice up your model, move it all around, make it ready for 3D print. But in this episode, we're going to take it a step further. We're going to take a step back, first of all, show you how to make that, and then uh, work through the process of exporting. And whether it's in this video or the, the next one, we'll show you how to slice that, bring it into your, your slicer, slicer for 3D printing on a resin printer. Okay, so let's back out of here. No, I don't want to say that. And just so we know what we're building exactly, here's one here. You can see the green part is the positive piece. The red part is the negative piece, the part that cuts. And you can see it's pretty dense mesh. Um, if I look at the transparency, you would think you would see something, but because they have poly paint on them, I think it's, uh, well, no, it's because they're all part of the same tool. So, and that's kind of the ending part. So if I were to split to parts, then there we go. You can see transparency. Let's go to the other model here to make it more clear. Okay, so you can see how this green positive piece has some padding in between it and the walls of the negative piece. So that's obviously important for the gluing process and everything. So let's jump back out of here. We'll start it from scratch and we're gonna start a new sculpt. I'm gonna grab a cube, throw it on there. Now, initially it's, you know, higher, resolution. I like to work with the lowest resolution possible just because it feels cleaner. I can get sharper results. So what you want to do is go to geometry right when you start up. Otherwise, you start sculpting on it. This option will disappear. Initialize. Go to Q cube. You can see it made it quite a bit smaller. So first thing I'm going to do is just scale that up and we're seeing you know the scale go up there you know i think that's i don't know if that's centimeters i don't think it's meters you know probably your settings probably something i should figure out but i've gotten away with <laughs> without worrying about it up to this point great so we've got that you can see we're in perspective i like to get out of perspective we're in orthographic mode. We can see everything. It's a nice, clean two by two uh, square or cube. So we're going to need to duplicate this because we're going to use the same cube for a couple of purposes here. So we'll duplicate that and we'll hide one of them. This first one, we're going to go ahead and rename it to. the uh, cutting plane. How about that? Okay, cutting plane. Now what we're going to do here is grab our green scale and scale it here in the uh, up axis. I believe it's the y axis. Scale it down quite a bit. Um, 
down about as far as it'll go. No, it'll go further. Okay, so, you know, I had a, a user, a viewer comment who said that uh, you can actually just use a plane to cut and you don't need to have a, a cube with some thickness, which is true. I tried it. Thanks for that tip. I think it's nice to cut things up that way while you're working in ZBrush and maybe you're gonna bring it back together, Dynamesh it back together. But for 3D print, I like to have a little thickness just because you're gonna be gluing the pieces back together. And the way the resin printing process works, it puts kind of a little film on there, which adds some thickness. You know, you're cleaning it. If you put glue on it, it all adds thickness. So I like to account with that, uh, for that with, uh, with a little thickness. It also helps, uh, as you'll see, when I create this next piece, because it gives it, um, it gives this, this negative key part of the cube something to be embedded within, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't make sense yet, but I'll show you. So, up. Oh, actually want to scale it by the center of the gizmo. We want to give it some good padding around here because this cube part, which will be like a pyramid shape, is going to embed into your model. And, uh, and then this slicer, you, you want to have plenty of room to cut all the way through your, your part. So the reason I like to have thickness is right here. Because when I bring this up, I have some thickness to embed this part through into whatever. So when I go to Dynamesh it together, there won't be issues. If it was just a plane, the plane, whenever you Dynamesh a plane, it gets all distorted and causes problems and ain't nobody got time for that. Okay, so with this cube, we need to taper it, like I said, similar to a pyramid. And yeah, you could take move and, you know, we've, we've got, um, you know, our mirror symmetry tools going and you can just kind of adjust it by hand. But then it's going to be pretty difficult to get it exactly where you want it. So the better way to do it is so with our handy dandy 3D gizmo again. I'm going to hit a gear icon. I'm going to go down to taper. And then we'll get these little cones everywhere. And depending on which plane you want to make the, the taper plane, that's the one you want to work with. So this is the one we want to work with. But this little guy determines which direction it'll taper and how the taper works. So pull that down. That's about what I want. You can see it's a nice, clean, sharp, consistent angle. If I were to adjust this past that, it gives it kind of a curve, which we don't want. So you'll feel it snap and it'll say zero. That's where we want it. So once we're happy with that, we find this gear again, hit accept. And now we've got our shape of our key. We're, we're happy. We're getting real happy. <laughs> um, and now we need to create the positive part of the key, the piece that's going to go up inside. So the way we'll do that is we'll duplicate this again and we'll take one of them here and we'll rename it to negative and these names are gonna change later so I'm not gonna get too precious with what they say just enough for me to know what's going on because it's always you know good practice to name your your layers or your subtools depending on application you're working in. Okay, so we've got a negative and a positive. We're working on the positive now. We've got transparency going. Right now, we're not seeing any difference because it's taking up the exact same space. Now, if we were to move it, you would see, okay, now we see what's going on. 
which is fine. And that's, you know, one way to do it, but you have to kind of move it pretty far down and then maybe have too much space up here. That may be fine, you know. But the way I like to do it, for better or for worse, is with this selected, I go to Geometry, Deformation, scroll on down to, where was it? Squeeze. Then I make sure all of my axes are activated. And then I bring that down. And what that does is it gives us some good spacing on all sides. It's not as much here. And then it kept the bottom where it was from the beginning. No, might have moved it down, but no. Yeah. Kept it in the same spot. If I go back to this, yeah, that one goes all the way down too. So that's kind of a good thing as well, in my opinion. Okay, so we'll get out of transparency here. I'm gonna go to solo mode. And what we need to do is extrude this down. Now, if we had Z modeler, we could just select these, extrude, and we'd be just about there. But we don't. So what I want to do first is go ahead and dynamesh this. I'll bring it up to four or five hundred. Hit dynamesh. We got a good dense mesh going. Um, and what I want to do now is with my mask grab a little bottom edge of that. It doesn't have to be too much. Then we'll tap to invert the mask. Tap on here. Yeah. Um, to, to smooth it, for some reason it's giving me trouble here. Yeah, I want to get a different tool. So by holding down this, we'll, we'll smooth the mask a little bit. Okay, and now with my 3D gizmo, I can hold this down, zero it out, send it to home, and then you would think that it should move, but I think I basically mask the whole thing again somehow. <laughs> That's okay, we got this. So with our mask again, go to, no, oh, the wrong tool. We'll just hold down mask, drag it, go to negative to erase some of the mask. Looks like we got some of it. I wanna erase more than that though. All right, now it's clear. We can, Smooth the mask, okay. That's that's doing what we wanted it to do now. Hit the gizmo, bring it down. That's basically extruding in the world of ZBrush without uh, <laughs> ZModeler. So we're gonna clear that, gonna dynamesh it again. So now it's consistent. Well, that's feeling good. You know, it comes up with a little bit of jaggediness. So what you can do to smooth that out, go to geometry, uh, clay polish, hit that with some polish. Boom, looking nice. You can see it kind of added a little bit of masking on the edges. So you wanna clear that out. And then that piece is basically done. Let's go to our other pieces here. Okay. I'm gonna get out of transparency mode here. And we wanna make the negative piece all, all one piece, basically. I'm gonna bring cutting plane below, hit merge down, click okay. Now it's all part of the same tool. But just like with the positive piece, we wanna dynamesh that. And that brings these two pieces together, gives us some good, um, Geometry, oops, I don't know if that's quite enough. Gives us good geometry to work with to give us quality cut, hit Dynamesh. There we go. Now it's all one piece. Make sure nothing's selected. Good, feeling good. Again, we're gonna hit that with the clay polish. 
Boom. Clear the mask. Okay. So, uh, you know, for the next step, when we actually start cutting, as you may have noticed from the beginning, I like to have colors to kind of indicate, you know, which one does which. And I want to make sure I've got RGB selected. And then for my negative cutter piece, the part that's going to make the hole, I'm going to make it red. Fill that object because red is a negative color, right? And then for the positive color, select this. I bet you can't guess. Oh, you're right. Green. That's right. We're going to do green. And you do whatever color green you want. Fill that object. And I may, did I clear that mask? Yeah. Look at it. Okay. So now we've got red and green. They're looking good. One last step before we can export. And that is, and it seems a little counterintuitive, we want to merge those together. All right. And then we're going to give that a name. Uh, rename it. Because when we, eh, when we export it and bring it around, we want to know what it is. So this is E. Final, hit enter, key final. Now we're going to save that as key final. Okay, and then we want to export it. And 3D model, got this, yes, that's what we're exporting. We want to do a ZTL, which is a ZBrush tool. And here it's Repopulated the name, um, but we want it to be key final. Okay, export. Then it's going to say, Where do you want to export it? Unfortunately, it doesn't just remember it within ZBrush, but that's probably a good thing in the end. Um, I've got this folder in my 3D files or, or in my iPad called 3D files, so we'll save it there. Save, does its magic, and should be saved. 